Wednesday, May 1. Christ alone, grace alone. Read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, Romans 3, verses 23 and 24, Romans 6, verse 23, and Romans 5, verses 8 to 10. What do these verses teach about the plan of salvation? First of all, Ephesians 2, beginning at verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And Romans 3, verses 23 and 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God has provided salvation as a gift. His Holy Spirit leads us to accept by faith what Christ has so freely provided through his death on Calvary's cross. Jesus, the divine Son of God, offered his perfect life to atone for our sins. Divine justice demands perfect obedience. Christ's perfect life stands in place of our imperfect lives. The divine law we have broken condemns us to eternal death. The Bible is clear. Through our sinful choices, we have fallen short of God's ideal for our lives. We have sinned. Left to ourselves, we cannot meet the just, righteous demands of a holy God. As a result, we deserve eternal death. But there is good news. The Apostle Paul assures us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We read that in Romans 6.23. It is a gift undeserved. If it were by works, we would not earn it. And if there is any one truth that shines out of the gospel, it is that we cannot earn salvation. Martin Luther and the Protestant reformers discovered Christ and Christ alone as their source of salvation. It was then that Luther began to preach the message of Christ's saving grace. Crowds flocked to hear his heartfelt, life-changing messages. His words were like a drink of cold water in the barren desert of their lives. The people were shackled by the traditions of the medieval church and kept in bondage with centuries-old rituals that provided no spiritual life. Luther's biblical messages touched hearts and lives were changed. As Luther read the New Testament, he was overwhelmed with the goodness of God. He was amazed at God's desire to save all humanity. The popular view taught by church leaders at the time was salvation as partly a human work and partly God's work. Luther discovered that Christ's death on the cross was all sufficient for all humanity. Ellen White writes in The Desire of Ages this classic piece on page 25. Christ was treated as we deserve, that we might be treated as he deserves. He was condemned for our sins, in which he had no share, that we might be justified by his righteousness, in which we had no share. He suffered the death which was ours, that we might receive the life which was his. End of quote. What a powerful and wonderfully written summary of the gospel, that we could be justified by a righteousness in which we had no share. What a promise. And so, to finish the day, if salvation is the work of God in Christ, what role do our good works play in the Christian life? How can we affirm the importance of good works in our experience without making them the foundation of our hope? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember... 
God is always faithful.